Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and today I'm here to talk about something, you know, that's quite new to my channel. So I have been making a journal lately. It looks like this and I just love the aesthetic so much that it really inspired me to live that scrapbooking, crafting life and just make spreads for everything, different weeks, things that inspire me, put in different photos, just a place that I can be happy and creative. Something else that I've been putting in this journal are book reviews. So I'll give you a sneak peek of what we're going to be talking about today. And that is Michelle Obama's autobiography, Becoming. So this was the third audiobook that I'd ever listened to, and it was the second autobiography that I'd ever read. And can I just say, Michelle is an icon. Just, she is so amazing, and she achieved so much. <laughs> While I was listening, I was like, should I have gone to Harvard Law School? <laughs> if you do not know who Michelle Obama is, in 2008, the world got a blessing of Barack Obama being inaugurated as the President of the United States of America. He was president for two terms, so much took place, so many improvements were made, you know, we miss him. However, I feel like people only know who Michelle Obama is because of Barack Obama, and Michelle is amazing. I don't know why we don't know more about her, rather than her just being the first lady. Thus, I read the novel. I'd heard that it was good, and I just wanted to know more about Michelle Obama. I wanted to know her story, what she was about, you know, maybe what kind of pizza she likes. Just wanted to know everything. This audiobook was a long one. It took 19 hours and three minutes. And I'm not gonna complain about that. It was great. I felt like I was hanging out with Michelle. She narrates it, so that was cool. She has such a good speaker voice. Like, you can tell that she has practiced and practiced public speaking over and over. Incredible. Unmatched. Unparalleled. <laughs> I am a bit late to this one, so it came out in 2018. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, or an 80%. I would say that it has taken its place as my favourite autobiography. And, you know, as an autobiography, I think it was great. It was very detailed, it let me know a lot about the person it was about, it was voiced really well, and I can't really complain. The reason I took one star off is because of the ending. So we go throughout the novel learning about Michelle Obama's life and we kind of close off with the message that like the future is now, like we are in charge of the future, let's do this, the youth, woo, let's go. And I don't know, that message didn't fully resonate with me in that I felt it didn't fully conclude the book. Now, I think it's hard to find an ending for autobiographies because the person's still alive and, you know, the person can't really find an ending to their life story because it's still going. So I just, I don't know, I felt a bit unsatisfied with that ending. Of course it was Michelle Obama and her message, but I felt it just didn't really sum up the whole novel, if you know what I mean. Anyway, let's move on. So Michelle as the narrator really made the autobiography feel authentic and, you know, friendly. It felt like I was getting in the car and hanging out with Michelle Obama and it was great. It was very interesting to hear about her childhood and how that really solidified the values that she carried through with her. We learned about her in so many different roles, we learned about her as a mother, and how she really did everything she could to protect her daughters from, I guess, the public gaze, which I think is so important. And I feel like it's just really great to learn more about someone who is as renowned as she is. We learn that she grew up relatively poor and I think that's something that a lot of the working class can relate to. You know, people might see her as the fancy wife, former president, but she was just a person and, you know, she grew up in Chicago. I don't know too much about America, I guess geographically, geopolitically, but I've heard that Chicago isn't the best place to live. I'm pretty sure it's like the highest murder capital in North America, which isn't great. So, you know, it just really brought us down to her childhood and her neighborhood, and we really learned more about what that meant for her. I really like how she played the piano. I feel like that is that is quite fancy, but also like, it's just such a cool skill to have. We learned in school, she was a bit of an overachiever, or like a lot of an overachiever, mainly because she felt like she had something to prove. And again, 
super relatable. I feel like that is the case with a lot of different people. If you're a woman, you feel like you have to, you know, try twice as hard um, just to get somewhere that a man is at. If you're queer, you always have to prove your identity over and over and over again. If you're young, you always have to prove your experience and talent to people older than you. I personally can't relate to racial prejudices and, you know, Michelle Obama is a black woman, so that is another thing that she had to contend with, another part of her identity. It's just great to see how she proved everyone wrong and that she was enough. She was more than enough. <laughs> she was amazing. I love how she ditched being a lawyer. I love how she went to law school and she like got into a good place at a good firm and she was just like, this isn't rewarding enough for me. This is boring and I want to help people. Is this something that I can sort of relate to? Because coming out of high school, I was like, I don't really know what to do. To be honest, I just want a good job and a lot of money. So I guess I'm going to be a lawyer. And you know, parents being what they are were like, oh yeah, she's going to be a lawyer. Oh my God that's great and then I got to the orientation of the law school and I was like this is probably the most boring thing I've ever seen somehow more boring than math so me being the creative that I am noped the heck out of there Michelle did too you know she she got there she worked for non-profits you know she is just such a powerful woman I really do miss them <laughs> as a couple in the public eye because in this book obviously a large chunk of it doesn't take place in the White House but the stuff that does really is impactful you know we learn about her meeting Barack and their relationship and then we move into the White House and she talks a lot about what they were up to because you know running the country is kind of what they were doing at that time for years and they pushed gun control bills even though they were just always always shot down by the republic parties and stuff i just love that they kept trying you know maybe one day they'll pass who knows she had a dream she planted a garden and helped reduce childhood obesity we could never that is so amazing like she got people interested in healthy food and made it affordable and approachable for kids and there was a marked difference they worked on climate change stuff which is more present than ever they brought youths into the white house especially women and helped empower them and they worked to get women educated around the world they set up jobs and support for war veterans and the families of people serving overseas in the army. She met Lynn manuel Miranda and he told her the original premise and raps for Hamilton. Look how his success soared, okay? Despite what I said before about the ending, throughout the whole book really spoke to me about identity and how we can all make a difference. Like, she really inspired me to be like, well, I can do anything. I can accomplish my dreams. I can help people. It's right there. We just need to have the means and the support to take it. Quote I wrote in my journal, that especially stood out to me was something along these lines. Own your story. It's what you have and will always have. That just really struck me because I live by the words of the 11th Doctor. We're all a story, so let's make it a good one. You know, I feel like everything's a story. Your life is a story that you know the best. Everyone's lives are stories. That's why we read books about them. Everything's a story. And, you know, your story is pretty much all you've got. Like, it's your identity, your past, you know, your hopes for the future. Your story is your life, basically. And you'll always have it. So I think that was really important to just claim it and, you know, take responsibility for it and shape it how you would wish. Another theme throughout this book is the idea of changing career paths and just, like, being brave enough to do that. Like, Michelle was really worried throughout this book about, like, oh, what if I ditch my job and I don't earn enough money? Or what if I do this and it's not as successful? And I think that's a really good thing to think about. Like, in the modern times, we are all driven by this idea of success that's perpetuated. Like, especially in terms of money. If you don't earn enough money, then you're not really successful. If people don't know who you are, then you're not successful if we're all after that clout and that monetization <laughs> speaking of which are you subscribed <laughs>
I had a bit of a hiatus for one week where life just got insane and I wasn't able to upload at all for that week. And then I came back and I had a new subscriber. That is amazing. If you are that subscriber, like, thank you. I did not expect that at all. And it also tells me that I'm more successful when I don't post. <laughs> So I'm getting mixed messages here. Anyway, I think it's cool. We all need to learn to quantify success in our own way. And that makes happiness. I think that's the gist anyway of what she was going for. There was a moment when I was driving that I audibly gasped and started freaking out. And that was when Michelle was saying how she and her family came out of the White House and one of the staff was like, we've arranged a special day for you. There are these, you know, what are they called? Like big cats. Like there was a lion and a panther and like a tiger or something on the lawn of the White House for you guys to pet. And Michelle's like, is this safe? Like, we have kids here. And they're like, no, it's fine. They're tranquilized. Like, they're pretty chill. So they start going up to these big cats. And then all of a sudden, the cat starts sprinting towards them and start chasing them. And they're getting closer and closer. And someone shoots a tranquilizer at one of them and it hits her daughter and stuff. I was sitting in the car like, what? <laughs> I was shook. I was like, how did this happen? How did they survive this? But it was a dream. I trusted this to be non-fictitious, okay? I expect this kind of trope in fiction when the main character is having a bad dream and we don't know about it and it's like, oh, it's okay. That's fiction. Nothing's real anyway. But in an autobiography... I bet Michelle was so proud of that. She's like, gotcha. The last thing I want to comment on about this book is that towards the end, Michelle Obama's like, the question people ask me the most is, am I running for president in the future? And she was like, heck no. <laughs> And that's because she never has liked politics. She doesn't like how it influences her life. She doesn't want to be a part of it. And she's had enough of it, basically. And, you know, amen to that. It seems like a stressful lifestyle. And she would be so good. She has all of the values and the experience and <sighs> the progressiveness to really make a good term. But she's like, it's not for me. And to be honest, she doesn't need to. She could be president, but she doesn't need to. So that was a realization. Come on, we need a female president. Let's do this. Anywho, those were all my thoughts on Becoming by Michelle Obama, her autobiography. Oh, I had a great time listening to it. I feel like I learned a lot and, you know, gained some literary respect for listening to an autobiography. Please let me know if you've enjoyed it or if you have another autobiography recommendation. That would be awesome. I really need to read more. Two is not enough. Let's to, you know, get some interesting people going here. All my socials are linked down below in the description if you wanted to reach out. Take care and I'll catch you next time, you little lions. Only people who have listened to the book will get that reference. Goodbye!